You are listening to the Become a Guitarist Today podcast with Adam Roach. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 147 with my guest today, Francesco Artul Satul from the band Light the Torch. Now, the opening track you are hearing is from the new album that we're talking about today called You'll Be the Death of Me, and the track is called Let Me Fall Apart. So Francesco is actually a great guitarist, and he does a lot of other things as well, including visual arts, film scoring, everything. Very talented person. So he gives us a, a little breakdown of some of the songs and his guitar playing as well. Now, before we go to the interview, thank you to my sponsors, Arnold Krakola, musician, and Custom Guitar Picks. And listen out for the adverts during the podcast. And also, you'll be able to hear parts of the album from Light the Torch throughout today's podcast as well. So if you do want to grab a copy, check out the link in the show notes and grab the album. Now, there's one thing we've, we forgot to talk about in the interview was uh, the last song, they do a cover of Terence Trentabi, uh, Sign Your Name, which is a really cool version. So make sure you listen out for that one. So let's go over to the interview now with Francesco. Actually, I want to get the pronunciation right too. So Francesco Artusatu. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. good. I've had a few Italians on my um, podcast and you've got to get the accent going, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. You Francesco, get to, yeah. you know, make it... You know, really stand out. Yeah, that's right. So, I don't know if you know Daniele Gotato. Yeah. Yeah, I had him on. And- we actually, like, when I started playing guitar, we we both were going to the same school. Oh, really? Music school, yeah, yeah. We had the same, like, uh, we were taking, like, the theory classes together. And, like, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen him in, in so long. Obviously, you no, know, he's, like, he's super talented. And he's, like, he's been doing a lot of good stuff. And, um, yeah. yeah, I haven't seen him, like, in person. I don't know. 25 years probably oh, wow. 20 years yeah yeah no, he's an amazing guitarist he did a clinic with uh jennifer batten the called the guitar cloud symposium oh nice so him and his wife you know gretchen men yeah jennifer is also like phenomenal yeah now so yeah so i have listened to the album a few times this week uh the first song you had was written a long time ago that living with a with a ghost which i actually wrote in my notes here that was probably i found it was like one of the heaviest songs would you say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, particularly you know what? Like the first song that I wrote was Leaving with the Ghost. The second song that I wrote was uh Come Back to the Quicksand, which is kind of like the more the softer kind of vibe and all that. Yeah. And then I think it's something they kind of do when I start writing for a new, new record. I start by writing what's gonna be the heaviest and what's gonna be the lightest oh, really? track. Kinda like, and then I kinda have like, okay, and now everything in between. It's kinda like how it happened. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's funny you mentioned those two songs because, yeah, definitely the heaviest one, which I thought was really cool. But that come back to the, the quicksand, that's probably one of my favorite songs. Your solo in that's really cool too. Thank you. Yeah, just really been like What we have on the on the record, it, those are actually like the, the intro riff. That's actually, we kept what I had from the demos because it sounded so good. And then we were trying to kind of replicate the same exact tone in the studio and we just couldn't really get it as good as that one. It's like, you know what? Let's just keep that. Okay, so, so I wrote down a few notes here for some of the songs. So the first one, uh, More Than Dreaming, I, that's, a, that's a great opener, that one. Lots of different riffs and the, the harmonies in the chorus. So with songs like that, does um, Howard do all the vocals for the harmonies or does I think Ryan do it as well? Yeah, yeah. Ryan does the, all the harmonies, you know, all backing vocals is Ryan and yeah, and Howard does all the all the lead. Yeah, she's got a great voice too, Ryan. Oh my God, he's he's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally, you know, it's like such a big thing also for live. He's, he's always singing so well and he's got great voices like in the studio he's i mean he's been doing this like doing harmonies for many many years so he's like so quick and yeah. literally he's, he's he's got such good ears you literally tell him in the studio like try this and he, he hears it 
one time and he goes in the booth and just sings it. It's oh. like, he's, he's phenomenal. Yeah. I love like Howard's and Ryan's voices together. I think it really makes a, a great caller. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Just the way, I mean, it gets, gets up there. He's pretty high. <laughs> his vocals. Oh, wow. It's, like, it's insane. Like sometimes like we're doing harmonies and then we're always like the producers, like, can you, could you do that? It's like, Oh yeah, no problem. It's like, there's no way you can do that. It's too hot. <laughs> and he does. It's like, it's crazy. It's like, yeah. yeah. I think the only other person I've seen do that is uh, Michael Anthony. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, living with a ghost. The the second line of the chorus. Now, is that Ryan singing that? Yeah, yeah. And then on the on the third chorus, it goes even higher. Yeah, I love that actually. Yeah. I just love that. It's so good. Yeah, that's no, really cool. Just like I said, the, yeah, the voice is playing well, and you can you can really hear that difference in the voices. Yeah. Like for me, how it reminds me of a bit of a Doug Pinnock, you know, from King's X, that type of yeah. tone. Oh, and he is one of his favorite singers, actually. Oh, seriously? Yeah, he loves King's X. Uh -uh. And King's X, what a cool band. Oh, yeah. The single, Let Me Fall Apart, which I actually I watched your uh, guitar playthrough last night. Yeah, it's, that's a simple playthrough for that specific song because that song's got you know a lot of strumming and yeah. and the one riff, like it's it's kind of like a simple, you know, kind of riff and uh, yeah, it's it's honestly like it's it's another song that's just just fun to play live and it's more like you know thinking about the live kind of a performance more than the, you know each part, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So how long have you been playing seven strings for? Well, I started, I think I started with seven strings in 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm basically like, as soon as I started playing guitar, I was already listening to like the first things that were really, I started late, first of all, yeah. to play. But right away, I was like listening to Passion Warfare, Steve Vai. Yeah. So there's like seven string in there also. And then uh, Dream Theater, the album Awake. And then hearing this, I just loved it right away. It's like hearing this lower, like note, and it just like so powerful. And right away, I was like, I, you know, I know, it's like I have a lot to learn with a six string, but yeah. you know, I, I definitely want to get a seven. And yeah, so it's like for for many years at that time. So I, I went to Berklee College of Music. So obviously, like the the guitar that you were gonna be playing is six string. Yeah. And so, but at the same time, I was like doing a band, and we were playing seven string. And so. Like for many years, I was just playing both, and now it's kind of like it's pretty much all seven string. For a while, I was also playing eight string. Oh wow! Well. But yeah, with the with that, we you know, like the 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 two albums we have like a good amount of eight string stuff. But mm. it kind of like I don't know, just like even for a matter of comfort, and then having I I don't know, I have more fun playing a seven than an eight, and uh, and also like I think there's something about the eight that can be, you know, it depends on like what you're trying to do, obviously in terms of music. But I think like uh, with the range, Howard's range and things like that, I think was just like the seven was like a better approach. And and now it's like I still, I mean, I still collect guitars seven and, and six. Yeah. Six I don't play that much, you know, obviously. But I still like even on the on the record, there's like parts, there's some leads and solos that I record with six string. And then, uh, and then I have certain six string that, for example, I use for a specific tone. And so it'll be like still using them here and there, like a clean guitar here could be like recorded with that. Mm -hmm. And it's like stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that was my next question for you. Do you get back onto the six string and how does it feel when you do? What from seven to six yeah. feels like, oh my God, this is like, like walking downhill. It's so much better. It's so much easier. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, like with all the, when the, I was like studying a lot, like the music theory and all that with the, everything I kind of did all of it with the six string. Yeah. 
Mm. So to me, it still feels like if I look at a strict six string, it just makes more sense than a seven in a way, yeah, which yeah. is kind of crazy because I've been playing seven for so many years, but still six is simpler. Yeah. You know, if I, if somebody were to ask to talk about like the music theory behind the guitar or like things like that, or just like really visualize or I to, to teach, I would still kind of rather do it on a six string. It, yeah. To me, it's just simpler to visualize it. And, and you started with um, classical too, didn't you? Classical guitar? I did a, I did classical guitar. Actually, I, first I started, like, most of it was, like, uh, doing jazz and uh, okay. electric guitar. Then I I felt like, okay, I kind of want to – there's something about classical players that have, like – you know, I, I really liked how pristine and clean it looked and then how it felt. And then when I started actually studying with this teacher, I realized how much, like, thought is put behind, for example, the posture. Yeah, yeah, that's right. and uh, it, the control of the left left hands, like how you're you should be able to really feel each finger, like as like its own, like the pressure between thumb and fingers, like how like things change, like and so the, I was like kind of you know really helped me to kind of like realize okay I I, I want to take even like playing electric playing anything that, that I do it's kind of like all this makes sense so I kind of want to incorporate. And uh, I'm actually lucky that I never really had problems with like tendonitis and things like that. Anything like helps to have a good posture, you know, that's, that's a massive thing. So do you still play much now, classical? Uh, no, actually, I haven't in a while. I mean, I, I do like some, you know, I play with my fingers and like acoustic sometimes and stuff like that. But not really like, it's definitely like a very small percentage of my, of my playing. The level of accuracy that you need to have with like dynamics, much is so important. I mean, even with electric, obviously. Yep. But with classical, it feels like it's you gotta. I'm, I don't know. It's like a different kind of. It really does feel like a different instrument in a way. Yep. Now to hear from one of our sponsors. You don't need a drummer to make an amazing metal song. All you need is access to tracks produced in a great studio by a great engineer. My full-length drum tracks are crafted using the best sounding samples I've been developing for over a decade and have been used by thousands of professional musicians worldwide up to the highest level in the industry including John 5 and Gus G. Stop wasting hours of your time trying to program drums and stop wasting tons of money to have your drummer record in a studio for mediocre results. With my drum tracks, you don't need to worry about any of that. Just drag and drop your tracks, press record and you're done. All of that with a killer, authentic sound. So go to my website arnokrakovka.com to start rocking. The keys on the album is that all you as well? Yeah, something that like more and more over the years, I kind of fell in love more and more. And uh, a lot of the music that I listen to, I mean, a lot of I listen to is like soundtrack based, basically. You know, I mean, it, even when I was a kid, like things like would watch, you know, Blade Runner, and then the music. It's like the music is amazing, and uh, and so it's like right away kind of like interested in uh, like synthesizers and it's like all that just like being able to manipulate a, a sound yeah. i actually like it's something that over the years you know because i in the beginning you know you just move knobs and faders kind of like yeah. I, at least i didn't really know what i was doing but then <laughs> once you really start kind of like figure it out what all these things can do and you start creating your sounds you start manipulating sound it's so much fun it's like this like uh I love just getting lost and spend hours just like moving <laughs> up and figuring out like, yeah. weird sounds and things like that. Obviously, like, and I think like, in a way, I like then to to obviously make it like create some kind of like the, the texture, like the, the 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 base for a lot of the, our songs. Okay, I mean that's the other thing too. I mean, you know, not only uh, you know, amazing guitarist, amazing songwriter, but you've got your to play and yeah, film score. Scoring? Yeah. Visual arts, everything. You know what I mean? Over the years, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just like, I just feel good when I'm being creative. And and I realized over the years that 
being creative and with like I don't know artwork or visuals or or being creative with music is still kind of like really does feel like it's part of the same I don't know it, it speaks to me in a similar way obviously there's something about what happens after like the, the type of emotion that you get like this the level of the adrenaline that I get from music for example like you, you go on stage you play a big festival yeah. you can't compare that to anything that is related for example to work on with you know artwork or anything like that I'd never feel like that kind of adrenaline mm -hmm. but so it's almost like a slower process of like just being more patient and just seeing things happening in front of you visually and then developing it's like so it's it's kind of like helped bring every kind of way to be expressive and be creative altogether well, that's incredible like even at the front cover of the album so that 3d uh artwork yeah it's really good thank you yeah because i'm actually writing an album at the moment with a, another guitarist in brazil it's phoenix van der weyden and uh, she's an artist as well and she's done all the artwork so it seems like there's a few right. guitarists that have got into that that way as well and joined us together. yeah I mean, honestly like i think like for the longest time when you like do music and you you hire an artist to do your images or like to do like there's something about kind of like can be difficult to really express you know it's like it happens that for example you really like an artist and you like what they've done with yeah. certain bands right mm -hmm. but then when they do something for you it doesn't really feel like i don't know it's like it got to a point where it was like you know what it would be amazing if i could do it it's like if i have the idea it's it's really gonna be you know to me it's like putting out a record all the visual elements like from the merchandise to like the photo shoot the videos everything i like to make sense to, together it's like a package right yeah. I, I don't want to have all things feel disjointed yeah and uh, and kind of being like kind of like behind the the creative aspect of the visuals also it's like i think it's like a it's a very cool thing i i love it it is yeah no, it's a just a bonus that you can do that you know i mean if i was to do that i have like a little stick figure of a man on the front <laughs> <laughs> i can't draw anything so <laughs> Last year during the pandemic, I know you, I saw some other interviews where you said, you know, you didn't really touch your guitar for a while because you just finished doing the album and everything. But did you do any artwork during that time? Oh, yeah, I did so much artwork. I basically, like, first I wanted, for a long time, I wanted to have, like, kind of like a, a sabbatical where I would just, like, study more art. Because, like, what happens, like, years ago when I started studying, it was just, like, fun, right? Then I started getting jobs and I started getting busy with that. And then it's almost like while you're between doing jobs and then doing music, I, I stopped having the free time to just learn more. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so I really took the, the first six months last year, I was just like, like a maniac, just studying like anything that I could just in terms of, you know, artwork, visuals, programs, animation, all that. And then after that, the first six months, I started taking jobs again, and and I saw the difference. I, I'm getting better jobs, and I'm <laughs> doing better projects. So it's you know it's good. Yeah. Did you have much to do with the the mastering and the mixing? Yeah, uh, not with mastering, but with uh, with mixing, we we're obviously we're involved with the the ways. Like it's also like I like to work with the you know in the past I I did a record where we had an engineer and then after we were done we just send it to a guy who would mix it okay. and that to me kind of felt confusing because i like to while you're in the studio we're kind of mixing already in the studio we kind of like already like the arrangements i kind of want to hear it yeah. what we develop i don't want to have somebody else come in later and change it yeah. right yeah, so right. like to me like all the you know putting things together is like with certain kind of sounds sort of i like to do that while we're recording yeah, and then obviously the, the fine tuning with the mixing and the fact that we record drums last, mm. so obviously like that's that's a big part of a mix. Yeah. So uh, and I mean and the guy who mixes our records is amazing. Yeah, it's the second record we do with them, and I think I love the the production. It just sounds so beefy and and powerful. I love it. Oh, it does. It's very clear. Now I know you guys did your live stream for the the album. It's no longer there, is it? It's uh, gone now. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it was on demand for 48 hours after. Oh, missed it. So how'd you go with that, with the, 
the, the songs from the new album? How'd you, how'd you find the new songs? Yeah, we, we played six new songs. Okay. So that was like half of the new record. And it was like a, a bit stressful because we obviously, we, I mean, we obviously got together and rehearsed. And then we were playing after more than a year of not, you know, playing together. Yeah. And also like adding a bunch of new songs. So that was like a very stressful few days of just trying to make it. But yeah, it's like a lot of the new material, just so much fun to play, you know, just like a, like that song actually, uh, Living with the Ghost, that song is so much fun live. Yeah, Can we? yeah I was a lot of songs when I heard them, I thought, oh wow, they, it's definitely a big arena, people are going to go crazy. Wait! 